It's an absolutely insane day in the world of Magic the Gathering. There has just been a massive market crash that is accompanied by a ton of Magic players straight up abandoning the game. This has to do with the recent Commander bannings, which have caused a ton of damage to the game, have far-reaching consequences, and the game may actually never recover from this. Magic. History. I'm an old wizard. The magic historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, I hope the day finds you well because we have gathered for a gargantuan installment of mega magic news. Financial disaster edition. This might actually be a bigger crisis than what happened with Magic 30. And I never thought that I would say those words, but here we are. I have a whole page worth of stuff that we need to discuss. But before we do, a fun little side note. This weekend is the Toronto Command Fest, and I am going to be in attendance. So if you're heading to it, I will see you there. That out of the way, let's talk about the pure insanity of this situation. Now, unless you are living under a rock, you know about the recent commander bans. Four cards were banned, and it's funny because I sat there and tried to remember the four cards, and I'm like, okay, Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt, Dockside Extortionist, what was the fourth card? And then it was like, oh yeah, it's Nadu, because Nadu being banned, even though it was designed for Commander recently and just got printed, is a complete footnote to this conversation. So throw Nadu off to the side. It's 100% about those other three cards, which all had big, fat, hefty price tags. And especially in the case of Jeweled Lotus, has become completely obsolete. The other cards you can play in other formats, and in the most technical sense, you can use Jeweled Lotus in other formats too, but it literally is a Black Lotus designed to give you mana to cast your commander. So, the Commander Rules Committee came out of what felt like nowhere and said, guess what? We are doing a mega ban hammer slam and hitting multiple of these cards, and the outcry has been tremendous. First of all, whenever something like this happens, you have a number of people who just try and dump all their cards that they have. So it's like, boom, I'm just straight up getting rid of my collection. So that starts to add extra supply to the market, which drops prices. But this has been a mad dash to try and dump off things like Jeweled Lotus, obviously the cards that have been banned specifically. In fact, take a look at this little handy dandy graph here that shows you what happened with the entire Jeweled Lotus situation where it fell off of a cliff. So straight out the gates, Something like this makes a ton of people angry. You have players who are mad about it. You have magic investors who are mad about it. Now, when it comes down to it, the investors are upset because they've lost profit potential. Well, when you're invested in stuff, that is a, that's a risk you take, right? The people I really feel bad for are the players who are like me, everyday people who aren't loaded and have to save up for big purchases. You have to understand that a jeweled lotus could cost you $100, or if you're getting actually one of the super fancy versions, it could cost you hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Same kind of deal for Mana Crypt Dockside Extortionist, not quite as high on the price scale, but still a very pricey card, right? So you have a situation where some people saved up for months to get one of these cards only to have the rug pulled out from under them. That's a lot of money to spend on a card. We're talking about the value of triple A games. If you want to go and buy a video game, something along those lines. Now, obviously, when it comes down to it, they're game pieces. Anything can get banned, so this can happen. But this hit multiple cards at the same time. It hit a bunch of people who aren't straight up investor class and they got hosed with toys they wanted to play with that they can't even use. And there are some people who still have jeweled lotuses on the way to them in the mail along with the other cards as well. But for me, jeweled lotus is the real poster boy of the conversation because it is the one that has been absolutely obsoleted. And it ties into one of the problems of the recent era of magic. And this is one of the reasons that this banning might actually cause more damage over time 
than Magic 30 did. Because what's happened here is this has caused a loss of faith in the Commander format overall. So the Commander format is a weird beast. Most Magic formats are governed by Wizards of the Coast. So any player can be forgiven for thinking, wait, so Wizards in charge of Standard and Modern and Pioneer and Vintage and Legacy, but Commander is just some other organization that doesn't really have to answer to them and Wizards doesn't make the decisions? Well, let's be very real. Wizards is absolutely involved in these banning decisions because we found out that the rule committee had been in discussion with Wizards of the Coast for over, like about a year talking about doing these bannings. And that's part of what has led to the bad feelings that some people have over this situation because Wizards has been clued into the fact that, hey, wait a minute, the rules committee is actually looking at hitting these big label cards. And on top of that, you have the fact that the rules committee has been known for being very reticent, very hesitant to do any meaningful bans. We hadn't heard a peep from them in a while. The most recent thing was them talking about figuring out how are we gonna get silver bordered cards into a more feasible scenario so we can put them in different tiers for people to use. So nobody, I mean, aside from insiders in the know, had any clue that this ban was coming. But Wizards of the Coast knew, obviously the rules committee knew, and there are particular retailers and other individuals in the Magic community who do have inside information. So some game stores delisted all these cards from their buy list. We're looking at like weeks in advance, right? So inside information is flowing around and that causes an extra level of consternation. Now on one hand, I actually very much like that the rules committee is pushing back against Wizards of the Coast in one way. They're only half pushing back. So by pushing back, I mean for the longest time, it feels like the Rules Committee wouldn't do anything that caused any problems for Wizards of the Coast at all, right? So you have a scenario where they put out the recent unset and said, hey, uh, Commander Commander Committee, wouldn't it be fun if uncards were legal in Commander for a month and we want to print up advertisements that go in the packs and stuff like that to tell people you can play these cards in Commander. And the Commander Committee went along with it 100%, which, as far as I'm concerned, was a terrible decision to make because at the end of the day, the whole point of having a Commander Committee is so that you can have a codified set of rules. Yes, Commander does have rule zero where you're supposed to sit down with people ahead of time and talk about what's acceptable. But as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to playing games, you need to have a rule set that everybody can go and point at and go, these are the rules that we're playing by. Especially if you're somebody who's going to go down to game stores and play with strangers and all this sort of thing, which is something that Wizards has been encouraging more and more with the way that they've overall changed the design of everything related to magic. Basically, Commander has become the centerpiece of Magic the Gathering. And so Magic's premier biggest format, its most important format, and that's undeniable at this point. I mean, if you look at everything they do, every set they make has Commander decks. Check it out. We're making Modern Horizons 3. It comes with incredibly expensive Commander decks. Not modern decks, because we were told we can't make you modern decks because you won't pay how much they cost, which is an insane thing to say to us. But that's a conversation for a different time. I don't want to get sidetracked here. So Commander is the absolute premier format. Everybody is ushered into it. Wizards of the Coast changed things around to the point where if you went to game stores, you couldn't even find starter decks to get into Magic with. If you wanted to start playing something like Standard, hit the, hit the bricks, ugly. Buy a commander deck and shut your mouth. That was basically the philosophy, right? As Wizards embraced the whole casual vibe, they said, hey, you know what? Everybody's playing casual. Commander's the king of casual. That's all we need to focus on. And we're seeing that that was not a smart decision. It has caused damage to other formats big time. Modern accidentally got ruined by Commander. Nadu was supposed to be a card for Commander that they threw in the Modern set because they wanted to have cards that appealed to Commander. And Nadu broke Modern and already got banned in Commander, right? So you have this diminishing return scenario where they focused it so much around Commander. When you go down to the game store, guess what? 
Good luck finding Friday Night Magic. Good luck finding people playing Modern. There are a little pockets here and there of people actually playing those formats, but almost everything has fully shifted into Commander. The change has been essentially a global one, making Commander the forefront format, right? And so now we have a bunch of damage being done to the format. The Commander Committee banning Jeweled Lotus is a big pushback against Wizards' cranking of power. If you haven't actually seen the ban announcement, I did go over it in full over on my live stream channel. There's a couple videos talking about the bans over there. So I'll leave a link to that channel down in the uh, top pinned comment if you want to go and watch me read through the entire ban announcement, pull it apart bit by bit. And there's other people adding in their opinions and everything as well in the chat. So you get a lot of information over there. But regardless, we have this scenario where they're pushing back against Wizards and saying, look, Commander has sped up. It used to be the games could roll around until turn 12, but now because of the incredible fast mana that's available, Jeweled Lotus being one of the prime examples, the games now can end on the sixth turn and Commander's not the casual environment that it's supposed to be. Wizards knew what they were doing when they created the Jeweled Lotus. They said, it's a Black Lotus. You can only use it to cast your Commander though, so it's restricted, except the Commander is something that you always have access to. So it's very very, very easy to utilize Jeweled Lotus. Or it was, obviously can't use it at all now, but it was very, very easy to use it. So they had crazy explosive starts. They also banned Mana Crypt at the same time. And then they turned around and said, hey, we're not actually gonna ban Soul Ring because, you know, it defy. I know we just said that super fast starts are a really big problem, but, you know, it's just kind of part of ingrained into the whole game and, you know, it defies all the odds. It's uh, What it really feels like, honestly, is this year-long discussion they had with Wizards is Wizards was willing to accept the other bands they were doing, but they were like, you can't ban Sol Ring. I did a video a few years ago saying that Wizards of the Coast is going to take control of Commander away from the Commander's Rules Committee. It will happen at a certain point. Right now, Wizards basically benefits from the fact that the Commander Rules Committee takes all the heat for the decisions that they make. They also essentially work for free because they're not Wizards of the Coast employees being paid to run Commander, right? So they do it because they want to. You have this scenario now where it looks like they're an independent body, but Wizards of the Coast obviously has a ton of control over them. Like I said, they got them to make uncards legal for a month, regardless of how many fights that would create for people. So Wizards of the Coast isn't gonna stand for Sol Ring getting banned because it's literally in every single commander deck that exists, right? So if you go to your game store and you look at the huge wall of commander decks, if the rules committee had banned Sol Ring, it would make every single deck on the shelf at the store illegal. And Wizards just isn't having it. I'm actually surprised that they didn't knee jerk take the commander committee's power away just straight up after this. But Wizards clearly decided, hey, we can live with this overall we're going to let you guys keep going but at the end of the day the rules committee is definitely paying attention to what wizards wants they're not truly independent and by banning these cards a bunch of commander players have lost hundreds and hundreds of dollars of value from each of their decks oh did you get four jeweled lotuses and there are people literally who are like yo i tried to get a jewel lotus in boxes a few years ago and i just recently got some magic prog i cracked a jeweled lotus last week so the feel bads are through the roof on this people are raging there are some people who are happy with the bands but there are a bunch of effects that are happening as a result of this there are people who are abandoning the game in multiple ways there's some people who are saying i'm done straight up i am selling all my magic cards and i'm never playing again there are other people who said i'm only going the proxy route from now on where i'm just gonna have cheap Chinese proxies printed up and use those. And here's the crazy thing. The card quality of the proxies that are being made exceed the quality of genuine magic cards. And if you only paid 50 cents a quarter or whatever to have it printed, guess what? You're not gonna lose hundreds of dollars just from the company going, boom, wizards made toys that are too shiny. I mean, part of what's happened is as it said in the banning announcement, Wizards keeps making more and more powerful commanders that have abilities that make it hard to get rid of them, 
things that let you draw cards to replace them. So crazy card advantage, and they're difficult to deal with. And as we keep progressing forwards, Wizards keeps making more and more powerful cards because they have to, right? The only way to get you to change up your commander deck is to make even more powerful stuff. This might sound crazy to people who haven't been around since the old days, but Commander used to be a place where you could play janky nonsense and have a good time. And now it's a straight up power hall race. Who can get the biggest, beefiest insanity out on like the third turn? Now that's not universal, but it is becoming more and more prevalent. And the more Wizards pushes Commander as the main format, the more it warps all of the game's designs. Look at standard sets, look at Thunder Junction. It had 50 different commander options in it. Like I said, Modern Horizons got ruined by commanders. So we need the rules committee to stay separate so they can push back against some of this. But at a certain point, Wizards is gonna step in and go, this is eating into our bottom line, right? So this massive market crash has had a far reaching impact with a number of different things going on. Obviously we've got things like people quitting, the uptick in proxies. We have TCG player coming out on the day of the ban. And if you don't know TCG player somehow, it is pretty much the biggest site you can go to, to buy card singles. Well, they put up a policy saying, well, you can't, you can't cancel your orders for any of these jeweled lotuses, any of this stuff. You can't cancel your orders. None of that. You are stuck. We don't care about buyer's remorse. Did you just spend $300 buying yourself three jeweled lotuses? Well, congratulations. They're going to show up in the mail and you are on the hook for the payment. TCG player is not losing their commissions on these sales, right? On top of that, they've also said, if your address is wrong, we're not gonna let you get a refund or whatever, that's on you. So anybody who tries to say, oh, it never arrived because of the wrong address, or like, too bad, you gotta pay, bro. Or if you try and say, oh, they banned the card, I can't play with it anymore. TCG player, it's like, eat rocks, chump, we don't care. So this is a huge deal to the point where people are actually making petitions to Wizards of the Coast going, unban this. There are people who are convinced that this decision is going to be reversed and soon. I got news for you, it's not. Them talking about this for the last year with Wizards, here's what it smells like to me. It seems like what happened is they said, hey, we're looking at banning these cards. And Wizards like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Uh, we get that you wanna ban the cards, but just wait a bit, just wait a bit, buddy, because we've got people to skis, right? Commander Masters and Ixalan, the newest one, both have these cards that have been banned in them. Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt, all of it. And interestingly enough, just through pure happenstance, right? Total, this is totally random and wasn't planned. The recent mystery box that they sold where you could get the mystery boosters, they came with collector boosters as a bonus. Now, what were those collector boosters? Oh yeah, that's right, Commander Masters, and Ixalan. It's almost like Wizards dumped all of the product they knew would be dead because it's only really big chase reprints that move the needle now when you're trying to sell stuff to Commander. Either insanely new broken stuff or crazy reprints are the only thing that get, get any attention. So you're buying these mystery boxes and going woohoo and then the booster packs show up. You crack a jeweled lotus. Two days later they go oh it's banned and the fallout from this isn't over because there are more people still getting their mystery but like you can find messages from people today who straight up just got their festival in a box that includes the mystery boosters and these booster packs of sets where if you crack a mana crypt oh are you excited about this for your commander deck check it out we did six different special glow in the not glow in the dark neon ink style mana crypts for ixalan they're all banned in the biggest format in the game. The feels bad on this is so through the roof. People have been telling me straight up, yo, I can't even open my festival box because this is so depressing to me. I'm just gonna turn around and sell it off. This is something that people were fighting each other to get to order. They were like, oh, I gotta get it super quick. It's gonna sell out. Meanwhile, Wizards is over there just having a big old laugh going, oh, so long. Let's get all the junk out of our warehouse. I wondered, honestly, when I looked at the Festival in a Box, I really wondered why they included collector boosters, right? Like specifically these 
random ones. Why Commander Masters? Why Ixalan? It feels so random, but it's not. It's incredibly calculated to leave Commander players holding the bag. And Commander players, being the most casual, are going... like. It, the crazy thing is you'd think that competitive players are the ones that are really going to freak out. But no, that's not how it works. Casual players really tweak out over things like this and they have the right to. And because it's played with groups of friends, this has a knock-on effect. If Johnny's mad, Johnny's three friends are going to hear about it the whole time. And it's probably going to upset them as well because the likelihood is with these three big boys getting banned, you're probably hitting a whole bunch of different commander players at once. This is the biggest format and Wizards of the Coast now has to tread more lightly. They can't just go, okay, let's make another crazy Lotus, but it's only for your commanders. What if they just start making a bunch of different craziness on that level? All of a sudden, the rules committee comes in and goes, we got to ban it. No, like this is this is too much, guys. What are you going to do, right? Commander design used to go like, hey, instead of making this card say target opponent, have it say each opponent. That used to be how they designed for Commander. Now they design for Commander by just going, we need busted nonsense in every set that appeals to Commander. It used to be back in the day, they had the standard, right? The main standard format. And they would go, okay, we'll balance standard. And then modern players can get their cards from it. Commander players can get their cards from it. And standard will be a healthy format. But in the current era, everything is so insanely warped around Commander that that's all out the window. Wizards pretty much sacrificed the physical standard format. It still exists on Arena, but the physical format in like Paper Magic, the whole standard thing, it's, it's, it's donezo. They're trying to rebuild it, but good luck considering how much they've leaned into Commander overall, and now they've bashed the format down. And the insider trading stuff, where you have individuals who knew ahead of time that this was gonna happen and selling off all their cards, it's literally led to people filing SEC, like reports, like complaints. This is insane. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically insider trading in the stock world is straight up illegal. You're not allowed to use inside information to make stock trades if you do, that's a crime. So there are people who think that the fact, hey, these stores, these people knew, the rules committee knew, maybe they sold off their stuff, people inside Wizards selling off their stuff, tanking it all, causing this massive loss of value. And they're saying, this is something for the SEC to look into. I've seen actual posted filed complaints that people have made. They're straight up trying to go after Wizards and other organizations like in a legal sense, which is mind blowing. And the amount of people who are pointing in all kinds of different directions going, it's them, it's them, it's their fault. This is the kind of confusion that Wizards actually banks on where it's like, don't get mad at us. It's the rules committee that did that to you. And it's like, no, no, you set the stage for this with your greedy insanity where you want to create these cards. Instead of balancing formats and trying to create reasonable cards, you're going for big air with overpowered nonsense and creating a ton of bad feels. People straight up trying to file legal papers over it. There's the number of people who've talked about legal action recently is astounding to me, right? So when you look at this all, there's extra tiers to it too. Like going forwards, it's going to be even harder for local game stores to sell big ticket cards. If you have really expensive cards, this has caused a loss of confidence in the magic market, right? You're gonna Are you gonna go and buy a hundred dollar card? Like, are you gonna save up for months? You go and work at your job, right? Life ain't easy. The world is hard the way it is right now. You work hard for your money. You save up to buy something just to play with it. Not because you're thinking, oh, I'll use this to buy my kids magical skidoos that fly through space in the future. My kids will be space skiers. It'll be incredible. It's just straight up. I can't wait to finally have a jeweled lotus and get to slap down my commander faster. Man, do I love magic. Man, do I love commander. And then all of a sudden, Boom, you're just knocked down. Oh, it's like, oh. So then when you go to the game store, are you really going to turn around and go, yeah, I'll buy that big ticket item. There's tons of people who said, I'm not buying a single magic card ever again. My LGS is going to feel the loss because I spent thousands and thousands of dollars there. This is mind blowing because Wizards has spent the last number of years insisting Commander is the biggest and most important thing in magic. And instead of actually 
managing it effectively under the whole, well, since this is the most important thing, and since the most people play this, we should take the most care with this. Instead, they have arrogantly churned out just insane slop over and over. Nadu is the most recent example, where when they banned it in Modern, they had an entirely separate article with a damning admission saying, okay, here's the thing. We had a different design for Nadu, and then we changed it, but we didn't play test it at all and just released it. And that's the kind of stuff that they're doing where they're just like, hey, we want people to play this in Commander. We don't actually pay any attention to whether it's going to cause any damage to the format, whether it's going to be a problem. We just dump it out because everything's casual now. We don't have to manage the rule set. We don't have to balance anything more. Commander is a four player style of magic, which means the cards that are built for it by necessity have to be more powerful than regular magic cards. And they have crowded out everything else to the point where a commander card broke modern recently so wizards of the coast has basically taken the golden goose started swinging it around the head slamming it against the wall going we can do no wrong and it's all in the name of short-term profits right hasbro needs a ton of money magic is where they get a lot of their money so hasbro needs money to make up for the billion dollar loss of their entertainment company they need to make up for all the lost money they were getting from children's toys all of that so they've been leaning more and more on wizards of the coast to give more and more profit because not only does Wizards of the Coast have to provide the money to make up for their mistakes? It has to provide the money for all of their new initiatives, the new things they're trying to bring in more business. So you have this situation where Wizards has more and more pressure on them and Commander is the main thing, but they've just been given a pretty big signal that the party's over in terms of just being able to make the most broken nonsense. Does this mean that we're going to see changes to commander where they go, we're not going to make cards anymore that say your commander on them? Even if that is the change, Wizards of the Coast moves really slowly. So it's going to take like a year for any changes that they've made to filter through the system. They've already seen the impact of putting too many legendaries and focusing on commander from standard sets like Thunder Junction. Mark Rosewater has come out and said, Going forwards, we're actively reducing the amount of legendaries that we put in regular sets because it's all short-term thinking. And they're just like, hey, standard will be fine if we shove a bunch of stuff into it that has nothing to do with standard and unbalances it because we're totally laser focused on commander. So ultimately, they've gotten everybody into the commander boat. Come on, get into the commander boat. It's the best boat. And then they took out an auger and just started drilling holes in the boat, right? Doop, 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 doop. And so the boat now is sinking. A ton of people are straight up done with magic. The ones who are sticking around are way more hesitant to spend money than they were. And this is bad news for wizards because they've been super greedy for our money. The price of magic keeps ratcheting upwards, right? Hasbro has given them the mandate of doubling their profits again. We already went through a profit doubling cycle and we're in the midst of another one. Card quality is already as low as it can go, so there's nowhere else to get money for that. This whole commander rush has provided them with a decent chunk of cash, but ultimately they've burned a ton of goodwill with their actual customers, a ton of actual commander players this time around. It's one thing to burn standard. It's another thing to burn modern. It's a completely different beast to burn commander and take away millions and millions of dollars worth of value from people's collections, which means your investor class is gonna be like, okay, we're, we're, we're whales who would spend a bunch of money chasing your cards and collecting them up and keeping the value of stuff on the secondary market high, which is what Wizards wants. Wizards wants cards like Jeweled Lotus to be really expensive because Jeweled Lotus all by itself, putting it into a set would sell boxes of it. That's a fact because I know people would be like, Oh, I'm gonna get packs of these because it's like a lottery to get Jeweled Lotus. Jeweled Lotus is gone now. Think about how many times they reprinted Mana Crypt. Same deal, Mana Crypt is gone now. So we've reached the point where the well is running dry. They've done a bunch of damage to Commander and it may just continue on with like this basically, this low level, all right, we've lost faith. What are they gonna do to restore people's faith in the game? I can't really think of anything they can do other than long-term sustained good choices which isn't going to happen, right? It's a wild day. Anyways, 
Thanks for listening to what I had to say. Like I said, you want to see me talking about the bannings and stuff? It's down in the pinned comment for my other channel. I'll be live streaming over there tonight. You're welcome to come by and talk. We'll be talking about, guess what? The banning insanity, the financial effect on magic, and all of that. Big shout out to my patrons for supporting my channel. You guys rule, and I will see you all in the next video.